get up and dash Hundred meters and I would eat up the competition It's just non-existent, I kick my feet up Thought I was passing till I got blasted I put my Welcome to Three Count Commentaries Still wishing you a Merry Christmas Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa If that's your thing So, um, we're gonna talk about Rampage Holiday Bash Um, December the 12th, 25th 2021, the Christmas episode where we're bringing wrestling back to Christmas. It's old school. We even got David Crockett in the building. You feel me? Greensboro. We wanna, we wanna play in all the old sandboxes again. Because it pops the 60 year old podcasters. Anyway, it's a good idea though. First match, Jungle Boy versus Isaiah Cassidy. Ugh. Um, didn't see the purpose in this. Jungle Boy wins the snare trap. I think as little is said about this, the better. Really, what's the point of this? There really is no point to this. You know, this match seemed to have no purpose whatsoever, except for give Jungle Boy a win on TV. Miro. Miro has a new promo. They had Miro re-debut. Well, they brought him back to cut promos on God on Christmas Day. Think about that for a second. This promo aired on Christmas Day, where he said that God does not have the balls to do anything about him. Well, what else did he say? He said that God is standing between him and his home, him and his wife, you know, because God won't let him be the champion again. He said that God doesn't have the balls to stop him, and that redemption doesn't come with a smile, but it comes with a price. And that you will see the joy in my cruelty, or the shame in yours. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm a big fan of cryptic promos. I think you should be a little bit coded in your language, especially when you're not quite all the way there. You're religiously preoccupied in terms of being an insane person. You should just be shouting out religious stuff. You know that that works. Now he's in a giant white room. I'm not sure what that means. Is he in the nut house? I don't know. He's in a quiet room. I don't know. Um. I, I think that having uh, Miro just go back to doing what he was doing before he lost the second match seems a little like he's off the tracks here. Again, the first loss had a profound effect on him. That was good. The second match, the second loss should have also had a profound effect. It should have taken him to a deeper level. And maybe that's where we're going. And this is just like the tip of the iceberg, which is perhaps the case. But for me, it feels like he's the same level of crazy that he was before and not quite ready to go off the deep end. I think you definitely needed to add something to the, or take something away from this character in light of his second loss. Um, the problem with AEW, they're trying to protect too many guys. So Miro was gone for like a month or two doing nothing, just kind of sitting at home. And... Uh, he wasn't able to build on the momentum that he had. But it was kind of like, well, we had to hide him because we beat him. And it's, it's really weird. But I, I still enjoy the character. I still like the promos. still think everything is pretty good. All right. So next match, Hook versus Bear Bronson. Now, big fan of Hook. Uh, I'm not a... I'm not, you know, jizzing my pants over him or anything. I'm not, a, I'm not in love with him like most of the internet. I think most I think Hook is becoming more of a meme than anything. But he is good. You know, he's good at what he does. What he's not good at is selling. And he actually had to do some selling in this match. Now, the no sell spot, which I think we should talk about first. I don't care how good Hook is, he's 170 pounds. There's no way he should be no selling a greetings from Asbury Park. Or a big power driver from a guy twice his size. I'm sorry, but absolutely not. I don't care if you're trying to push him. Unless this kid's going to be completely undefeated from this point to forever. You can't have him no-selling power drivers and big moves from guys who are bigger than he is. It makes no sense. It makes no sense that a Bear Bronson punch hurts him and forces him to sell. But Bear Bronson dropping him on his head, well, no, that's perfectly fine. He's okay after that. See how that makes no sense? That makes no, if you say it out loud, it makes no sense. I punched you in the head, 
that hurt. Okay, makes sense. You punch somebody in the head, that would hurt. I dropped you on your head. Oh, that didn't hurt at all. You just jumped right back to your feet. Makes no sense. He's not the ultimate warrior. He's not some big jacked up monster. He's not the road warriors. You know, the road warriors can no sell a power driver and jump back up. Sting could no sell a power driver and jump back up. These guys were big and muscular and fiery and energetic. For starters, heel is the hook. Is, I'm sorry, hook is the heel in this situation. Even though the fans kind of are in behind him, he's working heel. With that being said, why would you want to have a heel no selling offense? This makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. But um, I do like Hook. I think that his strength is surprising. He pulled off a great task plex. I thought that was pretty good. The um, the cro- the punches, the cross faces, and the body punches looked pretty good. He looked aggressive. He looked confident. His stuff had precision. It was you know it had some snap to it. That's that um, amateur background. It's very good. You know, he was very good. I think that uh, he's, I think that people are kind of um, getting a little too excited. Like the excitement over Hook seems to outstrip what I actually see. Like I see a kid with some potential. I see some kid with some promise. You know, just like I see a lot of it in the kids in NXT. But just like a lot of those kids who, you know, the people who run around that Tony D'Angelo should be NXT champion right now and Brian Breaker should be NXT champion right now. And I'm just kind of like, wait a minute, let, you know, let him give him a break. Let him breathe. You know, for Christ's sake, he's what are you going to do when he starts having bad matches? <laughs> you know, like what are you going to do when he starts cutting bad promos or tripping over himself? It's like right now he's in a position to be made to look good. So, yes, his opponents are really going to help him look as good as he possibly can. And these matches are basically showcases for this guy. You know, that's really all it is. He's not in a competitive back and forth. He really has to do some work match yet. And it's okay because he's his only second match. You know, he's doing very good. You know, I think people should just, you know, pump their brakes. With all of this sin hook and all this hook miss and all that. I was like, come on. You know, don't do not do that. You know, you're going to make a mistake here. I think that we need to let the guy develop a little bit more. You know, and we definitely need to see more of him. This is only a second match. Come on. Can he work a real match, please, first? Before we start, you know putting titles on him, putting, you know, hanging belts all over him and putting the Triple H and mean with him having the Divas, the Intercontinental Tag Team, and every two slammies on his ears and all that stuff. Can we can we cool it before we start doing all that? Or is the wrestling fan so very impatient that the, as soon as a guy shows up that shows any hint of promise, it's push him to the absolute maximum right now. It's like, come on. Hook has the potential to be the Randy Orton of AEW. He's very good. He seems to be a natural, too. He has some mystique to him because he doesn't talk. You know, and he's very arrogant, very cocky, but he can back it up. He looks like a backstreet boy, which I think is the number one problem with him. He's, he's kind of got that pretty boy thing going for him. But I, like I said before, I think he's the, the polar opposite of Jungle Boy. Or Jungle Boy is kind of the pretty boy, but he's kind of the guy next door, too. He's not quite the jock. He's kind of the guy next door. Well, Hook is more like the high school quarterback. You know, he's got the asshole look to him. Kind of like Stifler from American Pie. Just like He looks like a jerk, you know? Like he's a stuck-up rich kid. But he's supposed to be like this tough kid from like the streets or whatever. But I like it. You know, I, I like Hook. I think he's cool. I, I even like his name. His name is very cool. So, but I just want people to pump their brakes. You don't want this kid to get a huge ego before he's truly deserved it. And then all of a sudden we're going to spend the rest of our days tearing them down like we do with everybody else. Which is the number one reason why I tell people to, to, to pump their brakes on these kids. Because the more you push them, the more viscerally they're going to try to tear them apart when that time comes. Look at Velveteen Dream. The people who were pushing Velveteen Dream the hardest 
were the same ones pushing the hardest to get rid of them. Take your time. That's why I'm not tripping on the Austin Theory thing. It would do with Vince McMahon. Austin Theory is like 25. Take your fucking time. What's the rush? Nobody's going anywhere. WWE is not going anywhere. And if you believe AEW is going to be around for 5 to 10 years, guess what? Take your time. We'll hook to. Christ's sake. Can we develop the stars of the future instead of trying to throw 24-year-olds in the main event before they're ready? Get three matches in. Throw them in the main event. Like, come on. Relax. Uh, so, Layla Hirsch did the J-O-B for Chris Statlander. Uh, uh, that's sad. Real, real sad. Eddie Kingston is going to have another six-man tag. Another six-man tag. Another six-man tag. Another one. This time with Santana and Ortiz versus 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. I guess it's true that they weren't supposed to win last time. So now they got to run it back so that Eddie Kingston can properly win this time. Maybe Daniel Garcia should just lay in the ring and let Eddie Kingston pin him. Since we got to run it back. All right, Cody and Sammy Guevara. This is what everybody's been waiting for. Cody saves Christmas. Re-enter the Cody-verse. We're all going back to the Cody-verse. We're back in. We're strapped in. So Cody doesn't talk. Aaron does the talking. Says that uh, he told Sammy Guevara not to jump on a man when he's already pissed off. And Cody should be pissed off after everything he's gone through. And Aaron chewing him out for the last several months. And then Sammy Guevara says, that I, I am pissed off. I'm pissed off because you. everybody's acting like this is a big match for me. But like, no, this is a big match for Cody. Two years ago, this would have been a big match for me. But I've been through a lot of stuff. I've succeeded. And um, now it's a big match for you. You need this match, Cody. So you may have started this company, but I'm going to carry it for years and years. More pillar talk. More pillar talking. The problem with you have your four pillars is now you got this new kid. Like, let's talk about that for a moment before we talk about the Cody verse. Hook came out of nowhere. Nobody thought this kid was actually going to be any good, right? All right, so now we got Hook and we got to a lesser estate and Ricky Starks, two guys that are under the age of 30 that aren't pillars of AEW. Now you've already told the world you got four pillars. Those are your first, your four uh, guys. Where's Hook fit in with this? To me, if you line up Hook with the rest of them, he has more charisma than Sammy Guevara. He's got more charisma than Jungle Boy. You know, he's a better worker than Sammy Guevara from what I've seen. You know, Sammy Sammy botched like four moves in this one match. In fact, he botched so badly in one of these spots, it was almost like a Dante Martin. In fact, in fact it mirrored what Dante Martin did, where he absolutely hit nothing, hit almost the entire floor, and <laughs> he missed 96% of the entire move. But Hook certainly has like I'm not I'm I mean maybe I'm exaggerating maybe I'm going too far I'm that's not to say Hook is a better worker than Sammy Guevara I haven't seen Hook work a real match yet I haven't seen Sammy work one either but you know he's trying but he certainly has more charisma than Sammy Guevara where does he fit in this whole dynamic you've already told everybody these are your guys for the future so you're telling them that there is no possible way that they can be able to break through. If it's Hook or MJF, which one are you going to choose? On the merits, which one do you choose? If it's Hook versus, you know, Jungle Boy, on the merits, which one do you choose to go over? Or do you just say, well, uh, we've been pushing this guy for a long time, therefore he's going to go over. Who knows? You know? And this is why you can't build people based off of wins and losses. You can't really do that either. Because people, eventually everybody has to lose. So then what do you do? This is the Miro situation. What do you do when they lose? You know, eventually you got to be able to have some snap back from losing. You know, losing can't hurt you that much. It can't set you back that far. But when you build people based off of wins and losses, that kind of thing happens. But let's finally talk about Cody winning this title. So Cody defeats Sammy Guevara, two crossroads and a Tiger Driver 98. He worked the arm through the entire match. Um, the finishing sequence. Well, before we get to the finishing sequence, Cody kicked out of Sammy Guevara's finisher. 
the GTF thing, whatever, GTS thing. He kicked out of it. So he beat this kid and kicked out of his finisher to great heat. And the moment people started to play into the heat is the moment when I realized that the heat was not real. Okay. That's uh, the thing about real heat is that you, the majority of people would not be enjoying it. See, when I do smart tier segment on this channel, I have a human, I have a morbid sense of humor. You know, I, I really enjoy when people are legitimately mad. This is people being fake mad. Cody won, and now everyone's like, the internet's going to burn to the ground. I can't wait. It's like, nobody but you nerds are watching this stuff. You guys love everything. You know that you're being trolled and worked by Cody. There are no, even CM Punk says there are no casuals. There are very few casual AEW fans, very few, who are going to be worked by Cody winning. So, and I'm not against Cody winning. I think Cody winning was the right thing to do, especially for his character arc, and especially since I don't like Henry Guevara. That was great. It's great for me. I don't like Sammy Guevara, so him not being a champion is excellent. You know, Cody finishing up his character arc and saying, hey, I'm ready. I'm bouncing back. This is That's good. Cody finally bouncing back is good. You know, it completes what he's been doing thus far. His rocky storyline of losing the title and being sort of aimless and then, you know, re refocusing working hard and coming back stronger. This capped that story. Cody needed to win this title. This is when AEW did the right thing. Now Cody has to carry the belt and be willing to put over the next person. Now I know they did a dark segment where Hook came out and smacked Cody, kind of uh, alluding to them working together in the future. It's far too soon for that. It's far too soon for that, if we're being honest. It's and there, there's no way Hook gets into that situation with Cody and it looks any good. If he beats Cody, then you strap the rocket to him, and people are going to regurgitate him pretty quickly after that. And if he loses, then you beat him way too soon. If you beat him, if he loses within the next month, it's still too soon. You know, MJF went like almost a year without losing. You know, so, but again. You can't build people up by wins and losses. You have to build them up through characters because, you know, storylines are going to call for losses. So as far as Sammy Guevara is concerned, he, he wasn't in a storyline anyway. He was just sort of a gimmick champion where he had the belt and he did open challenges. I, I don't think he had any real storyline for the title at all. It was just kind of, I challenge you. Okay, I'll wrestle you. I win. Yay. And then we wait until the next guy challenges him and he wins. Yay. This was a, this was important for the Cody character. Um, and the dirt sheets and everybody else, of course, are playing into it, trying to think that everybody believes that Cody's heat is real. It's like, it's not, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not, there is no, the internet's going to be set on fire because Cody Jared or Triple Cody and all that kind of stuff. It's like, sure, if there wasn't a crazy contingent of people steering the ship, you know, it, it's just like when Hangman Page lost, you know, his title shot to the Dark Order. Immediately, people were up on it. Oh, I already know what's going to happen. It's the same thing here, you know. There's too many people on the inside for this to actually matter. They're not emotionally invested in Sammy Guevara losing. They immediately jumped on the Cody train and all oh, Cody knows what he's doing. This is a great troll, troll job from Cody. Like you're not emotionally invested into what's going on here. You're just, you know, you're too separate. And you can tell when people are very emotionally involved with this stuff because they have, usually they have really, really bad takes. And that's really what makes it fun. You know, like I watch SmackDown. I watch people melt down from SmackDown because Tony Storm lost. Some reason, people who say they don't care about WWE, they don't watch it, so emotionally invested in Tony Storm winning the title and she lost. Hmm. Compared to that to reaction to Sammy Guevara, who was 
I was told as a pillar of the company, he lost. Nobody got mad. Everybody was just kind of like, oh, that Cody, he's such a troll. He's trolling. I'm like, hmm. That, that separation we got there means that you weren't really into the Sammy Guevara experiment anyway. You don't really care. He ain't been champion that long either. He was champion for like, what, two months? Maybe? Maybe three? He didn't have a long run. So, but it was something, you know. The match itself was fine. Sammy Guevara jumped all over the place. That's the match style he does. I'm, I'm kind of tired of that because I'm tired of seeing guys jumping around in AEW. It's, it's gotten old very fast. It's got old really fast. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, the show was pretty much nothing to me. It was something that was on the air for me to eat dinner. That was important enough for me. That was good enough for me. So um, continue to have happy holidays because I know the holidays are not over. Christmas is over. But sometimes uh, there's other holidays out there. Happy holiday season. Now is the only time to say happy holidays. Before Christmas is Merry Christmas. After Christmas is happy holidays. So um, happy holidays. Um, like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace.